Hi loves, it's Shava. Welcome back. It's another Tuesday, another week, another video. Filming setups changed a little bit. What are you thinking? Do you like our new movie posters? I've had a little bit of a cold this week, so excuse my voice. I know I sound like a little gravelier than normal. Jamie's also got this beautiful new chair. I've just decided to sit in it, so this is where we're doing the video today, apparently. I hope that's okay. I went to Instagram to get some inspiration and was like, oh hey, let me know any advice that you have that is life-changing. And I have to say, you blew me away. I thought we'd go over some today and share. Share the wisdom. Share the goodness. I've been speaking to a therapist recently and she said something that blew my mind. So I will start off with my own first one. Take from it what you will. Maybe you need some advice. Maybe, maybe this is going to be some cryptic message that really works for your situation. Or maybe not. Maybe you're just wanting happy vibes, in which case you're also welcome. But here's my out of context piece of advice for you. Ready? It may not be their fault, but it's still their problem. Kapow! Mind blown! <laughs> That's helped rephrase so many things in my mind, so I don't know if it helps you. Let's see the other amazing life-changing advice that you lovelies have had. And let's go people. Are you ready? Are you ready? Okay. Sometimes things just do be like that. <laughs> I love this. I love this one. I also love the person who sent this. And it's so them. But it's also so true. I don't know about you, but I often find myself trying to find meanings out of things that just don't tell meaning. It's okay to not know. It's okay to not be okay. That's what I'm taking from it at least. Okay. You can pull over anytime. Meant for driving, but it's helped me take breaks when I'm having a hard time. I love that so much. You can take a break whenever you need to. And also it's this feeling of being in control. Like you are in control. You, you can stop this whenever you need to stop this. And guess what? You can start again. It's okay. <laughs> I love that. That's so cute. Not that exciting. Hey, don't, don't self-deprecate. If it helped you, it's amazing. The only way you guarantee failure is by not trying at all. A cliche oldie but a goodie. That's why they're so well known because they're so amazing. I completely agree with this. Sometimes you just need that little push. And if you have been struggling with something, you watching this right now and you're like, you know what? I just, I've, I've been scared. Let this be your sign. Whatever it is that you've been scared of trying to do, do it right now. I believe in you. You will not know. You will not be able to ever know if you don't try. You've got this. Oh my goodness, this following session is making me so happy. I'm so late, but I've been asking myself why I do the things that I do internally, and it's really helped. Oh my goodness, I feel like we're the same people because I said this to myself recently. I was like, why has it taken me this long to realize? <laughs> but truly, like, I, I, mm, babe. <laughs> During my teenage years in particular, I feel like I hated myself. There was so much of my own behaviour that either I couldn't explain, it's maybe less about me, but more I was putting such an onus on what other people thought and told me was my problem. Does that make sense? Like you're like, oh yeah, so-and-so says I'm naughty, so-and-so says I'm acting out, so-and-so says it's because of this, so it must be because of this. Or you just think, ah, oh, it's just what teenagers do, you know? Ah, oh, they're stupid, they're dumb. I was being stupid, I was being dumb. My point is it's so easy to just think you're a bad person and that you're like, oh, well, I've done these things and these things define me. But actually, they don't. It took me far too long to realize this. But like you, my love, if you think internally about why, why certain things have happened in your life and why you do what you did, did what you did, like in the past, for example, things that I've done that caused me an insane amount of embarrassment and guilt. It just makes me cringe to like shiver and think back on. And then I'm like, hang on a second, but I did this because of this. Just being able to justify it. It's not saying that you don't take blame for your actions. Like own up to your mistakes if you've made mistakes, but understand why they've happened. It's not because you're inherently a bad person. It's because sometimes things happen and we act in ways that we don't understand. And you owe yourself that understanding and that explanation. And I now not only do it for myself, but for other people. If other people act out <laughs> and I'm like, hmm, normally I'd be very, very mad about this. Somebody said something on a TV show. There's a difference between a reaction and a response. A reaction is not controlled. So you can react to something in like a ah, kind of way, but actually if you base your response on thinking about why someone has acted the way that they've acted, it can really help provide a context of the situation that's required to get healthy outcomes. I hope that makes sense. I don't know if it does. It makes sense in my brain, but thank you. This is very good advice. <laughs> I got a new tattoo, by the way. It's like transgression, but I hope you like it. Anyway, there are no wrong choices. Not always true, but it's helped me stress less about decisions. I was gonna say situations. Is it? Is it? Um, um. 
is it not always true though is it not always true i mean sometimes i'll be ordering a takeaway i did this very recently i was with other people and i stress but I, I, I like panic ordered <laughs> i never do this but i was just like yeah what they said and what the other person ordered was absolutely not what i wanted that probably was a wrong choice but then if you think about it that choice led to me trying something that i wasn't gonna eat i would never have ordered myself but ended up really liking and even if i didn't like it i know not to order it again so really are there are there really wrong choices I mean, yeah, now that I say this and I'm like, oh, there are definitely moments in which there are wrong choices. Do not kill people. Do not thieve. You know, most of the things that our laws are built upon are <laughs> considered to be wrong choices. Um, <laughs> but I completely get what you're saying, my love, and this is great advice. It reminds me of this quote from Alice in Wonderland where Alice is like seeing two paths and she's like, I don't know which one I should take. And the Cheshire Cat's like, well, where do you want to go? And Alice is like, well, I don't know. And then the Cheshire Cat's like, well, why does it matter? <laughs> like why does it matter what path you need to take if both of them are going to take you to a destination and you don't actually know what you want from the destination just just take either path then like it makes so much sense right sometimes i think we stress so much about making the right decisions me in particular i could be so anal about things like this but in some situations like choosing what university to go to what school to go to what course to do like at the end of the day especially with universities there's no wrong decision you will have an amazing time no matter where you go no matter what area you choose to fill out i'm trying to keep this as vague as possible in case this helps you and it's not a university decision but whatever place you decide to carry out a thing that can be done in multiple places you will make the most out of that thing regardless of the building that you're in do you know what i mean sure some can help more than others but you don't need to go to the best school to have the best education the best university institution the best whatever it's up to you it's up to you to make the most of where you are there's never a wrong decision whatever decision you make about what house you should buy if you're choosing between a few, what place you should rent. I mean, there can definitely be situations where landlords are a bit crappy, but my point is you won't know that going in. So whatever decision you make will be the right decision. You will have those memories at the end. You will have the outcomes that are special and fantastic and set you on your next stepping stone because of you, not because of the place. I'm gonna move on now. <laughs> the only certain thing in life is uncertainty. So true, uncertainty, death, and taxes. <laughs> I really appreciate this mindset though, just the idea of like, what if, what if, what happened? So, so what? Things are gonna happen, babe. It's okay. We're not gonna know the answer, but if we prepare for the chaos, how chaotic can it really be? Huh? I feel like that meme, you know, the guy that's like, <laughs> it sounds stupid but i think if you're in the right mindset and like place in life you're like yeah i get it <laughs> either that or i'm mad it's fine it's fine either way it doesn't matter what people think of you if you aren't happy with yourself be happy with you sound advice babe the amount of times i think the society in particular social media friendship groups just growing up bloody hormones <laughs> like there is so much in our life that makes us feel that we live and perform and do and be for others. But we don't, we be for us. And we forget that because peer pressure tells us what's weird and what's not. And that's just so wrong. There's this one tiny moment that I remember in school. I think it was a song, Gold Digger. This is how meaningless it was. I can't even remember the full story. Somebody came up to me may have been Justin Bieber or something like this, I don't know. I was like an emo, what you would call as an emo in school at this time. Everyone around me is listening to like rock, sad, depressing, loud, screaming music, which don't get me wrong, I loved a good bit of, still do listen to occasionally, I have a very eclectic music taste. And someone had asked me if I'd like, I'm gonna say Gold Digger, the song Gold Digger, which is obviously not what you would consider emo music. And I remember being like, yeah. And then this guy called Jordan was just like, oh my God, Shaba likes, was it Kanye West? That's why I'm thinking it was Gold Digger because I'm pretty sure the person was Kanye West. And I just remember feeling really crap for liking a song, which now if you think back is like so weird. <laughs> like, so what if I like the song Gold Digger? And then afterwards I was just like, I can never listen to pop music again. I must only listen to Black Bell Brides, which is a terrible decision by the way. Just because you deserve to be happy. And if happiness comes from range, you deserve to have range. You gotta live life for you. Don't do what I did, basically. You just be happy. This happens at events a lot too, you know? We go into rooms like press nights or whatever, and there's always this expectation of what you're supposed to do, who you're supposed to talk to, how you're supposed 
supposed to act like? No. If you want to eat the food that is on the table, eat the damn food. There's a reason the food is there and that is to be eaten. And if people are like, no, no one's touched their plate yet. You can't touch their food. Just go get the food. Oh, Shava, enough with the very terrible trivialized metaphors and examples. I hope this is helping you with some deeper problems than deciding whether to reach out for a canopy. You know what I mean. All right. Sometimes not getting what you want is a wonderful stroke of luck. This is so poetic. I love it. This makes me so happy. It's so true. I've actually not told anyone this before, but I went for a job interview at a place that I super, super loved. Like I was in awe. I idolized this industry. The place was called Gleam. It had amazing brands. It had amazing opportunities. Just the idea of working behind the scenes in something like that was so amazing. And I got through like quite a few rounds and I got invited to the place. I had to do this little interview thing and my entire life was then built upon Shava being a, a Gleam. Do you know what I mean? Like working in this industry. I was like, this is the place for me. This is perfect. Smashed the interview, at least in my opinion, I thought I did. Did really well with certain things. Got back, really positive feedback, blah, 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 blah. Didn't get it in the end. Didn't get it in the end. And that Shaba in the past was distraught. She was so sad. I cannot tell you how upset I was. I was just like, this is it. My life is over. What am I gonna do for a living? I'm never gonna be the, the, like, the person that I wanted to be because I was putting all of my hopes and dreams on having this certain life path that started with Shaba working at Glee. Anyway, my point is I didn't want to go anywhere else after that and so I completely switched career routes and in switching career routes I became a creative myself. Something that I never thought that I would do and now look we're sitting here with like 100k subs. That's insane! That's insane! Because I didn't get that job I ended up going for a filler job and that filler job ended up leading to my PhD which meant I got a scholarship to stay at home and research something I was super passionate about and become a doctor in the process and get paid for it. And because of all of that, I was unable to save and make enough money to be one of the very lucky privileged few. And now I'm a homeowner. I would never have had any of these things if that gleam path happened. <laughs> Completely, completely, completely agree with this. Life has a funny way of working out. And sometimes, as you just said, my love, it could be a wonderful stroke of luck. I'm very happy with my life now. I wouldn't change it for the world naturally. The idea of what I do now is way better than what my life would have been had I gone down that route. I have so many more to go through. So I think we're gonna have to do this as a two-part of video. I'm gonna do maybe just one more. Loving someone is much easier than liking someone. Emma Thompson. Emma Thompson is such a friggin' babe. That is so true. Much easier to be disliked than it is to be disloved. And it's horribly impossible to not love someone, despite how much you might not like them anymore. Because people change. Not impossible. You can totally fall in love with people, but what I'm saying is it's sometimes very difficult, even when you dislike someone, to walk away because of love. That's a very tricky situation to be in. Whoa, my mind has been blown yet again, but I hope you feel better, inspired from this wonderful community. Thank you so much, everyone who popped these in. I'm gonna put a few that I didn't respond to on my Insta stories, shameless plug, at sherbetlemon007. Go follow me if you haven't already to take a look at those. Like and subscribe if you'd like to, and I'll see you next week with another video, Tuesdays at 7 p.m. Be kind and have a great day.